Hi, I'm Poppy Cleary and I studied law with a year abroad at the University of Liverpool. I did my year abroad in Hong Kong, so I did it my third year, so I went in 2019 and I had a very unique year abroad experience. And when the second semester started in January 2020, Covid hit and I had to come home. It was quite heartbreaking, but it did mean that I had lots of time that I thought I was going to be on my year abroad that I actually wasn't anymore. And I used that time to volunteer in Calais in Northern France with a refugee supporting organization called Collective Aid. I really wanted to go and volunteer with refugees in Northern France because in my second year of university, I volunteered at Liverpool Law Clinic on family, family reunion projects. And family reunion is where you have a refugee who, or somebody that has refugee status in the UK, but their family is still abroad, normally in their home country where they've come from. And so the only way that they would ever be reunited as a family is through a family reunion project, which is where us as solicitors or caseworkers or law students try and help the family that are stuck abroad get a visa to the UK and so they can travel here safely, which is not normally something that refugees can do. They normally have to go on really long and dangerous journeys between their home country and the place where they eventually seek safety. So it's a really good project to get involved with. Um, I knew I wanted to do human rights law, but I had no experience of immigration, refugee or asylum law. So it was just through getting that volunteer placement that really sparked my passion for immigration and refugee rights. And so once I'd done the volunteering in Liverpool and the UK side, I really wanted to go and experience or witness a bit more about a refugee's journey and go to the other side of the English Channel. And so that's how I ended up in Calais. Um, I found Collective Aid through the Choose Love website, their partners. Choose Love is a very big brand that do a lot of fundraising. Um, and so I thought they must be a very legitimate organisation if they're recommended by Choose Love and help refugees. And so my first thing would, to say is if you are looking to volunteer abroad, which is an amazing experience and has um, really opened my eyes and also will help me in my career because I now want to do asylum law. But I really make sure and do your research on who you might volunteer with because uh, volunteerism is obviously a very big issue. Um, and so I just want to put that out there that that's really important that if you do want to do some good with your time like I did, then the first step is to really think about whether you're helping, what the organisation do um, and how they came to be there. What being a volunteer with Collective Aid looks like is that you work five days a week. It's different days every week and so you have a weekly rota um, and also different hours because you do different things. So you might have a day where you work completely in the warehouse and you're sorting through donations, you're checking that they're clean, you're packing things up for a distribution, you're building something, you're, uh, you're doing all sorts of things or you have field days as they're called which is where you actually go out into a refugee camp and you see what the community needs and then you bring that to them. So it could be tents, clothes, bedding, etc. Um, so every single week is different, every day is different um, and even your field days are different because different camps in northern France and different sites are different and have different communities that have different needs. Um, so that was one of the things I liked as a volunteer is that um, you never knew what your day was going to be like um, it was incredibly tough because even if you think you have a short day, something might go wrong, which makes your day really long. Um, but you definitely have to remember why you're there and who you're helping and that you can never have it as bad as a volunteer as the communities that you're trying to help. Something that I liked about volunteering in Calais is that you will probably meet a lot of people that have a lot of the same opinions and values and things like that as yourself because for most people they're not French and they're not from Northern France. And so uh, they've moved countries in order to volunteer, for example, for me from the UK to Northern France, but also you have people from all over Europe and quite a lot of Americans too, actually. So you have a really wide variety of people who tend to be very passionate about the same things as you. It's a really nice community. It's a really nice family to volunteer with. And you really do make friends for life because you bond over so much. Um, primarily probably your experience of being in Calais and being a volunteer there but I it's a really nice experience um I say that with a pinch of salt because obviously I think everybody would rather they didn't have to be there and, and that there wasn't this societal issue that forced them to be a volunteer for this cause 
but um, if you were to take a step back from that, then it is a really nice experience. As volunteers, you actually uh, witness and hear about a lot of traumatic events. It could be somebody telling you something that happened to them on their journey or telling you the reason why they left their home country, or it could be that something quite um, graphic or horrific happens in Calais and you see it. Um, thankfully, most volunteers in Calais go through a lot of training and there's a very good welfare system in place for volunteers. Um, but it is a really tough job to do. It's very tough to be a volunteer there and it's very tough to stay there for a long time. Um, and also tough when you come home and you're suddenly not helping people anymore because you do that for five days a week for so long or at least a month. People have to stay at least a month when they volunteer there. Um, and so it can be so difficult in many ways. Um, I think it's really important as a volunteer that you don't pry into people's lives too much. Um, you're not there to quiz a refugee or um, somebody from a community that you're trying to support about or why they're there, what's happened to them, because that might make them even more set, upset. They're already evidently in a very bad situation and so you don't really need to remind people of that. But people are also very open and happy to talk about their experiences and what's happened to them and their stories and I think it's one of the most humbling things I will ever experience is hearing what other people have gone through. Um, I also found, found it to be very, um, very humbling and also at the same time very angering how uh, when I left Calais I just got on a ferry and 30 minutes later or an hour later I was in Dover and then an extra 30 minutes later I was home in Kent and it was that easy for me whereas people are putting themselves in such dangerous situations and doing everything they can to make the same journey. But because I have a British passport and I was born in the UK and I have white skin, I could just hop over to a safe country and I had to leave behind all the people that I've been trying to help because they didn't have the same opportunities. Um, so that's really sad and uh, quite hard to deal with, but it is something that stays with you and it has such a big impact. Um, and it just makes me as a person even more motivated to be a very good immigration lawyer and a very good refugee and asylum rights lawyer so that not only can I help clients that I have in the UK with whatever their problems might be in a legal sense, but I can also push as a lawyer or someone very involved in politics for wider scale political and legal change so that people aren't put in the same positions that they are right now. There are some crazy things that you hear and see in Calais um, one thing that we found that we did quite a lot is give out condoms to people so they um, can either wee in them if they're in a lorry and tie them up um, or they put their phones in them and tie them up if they're going to go on a boat so that it's like a waterproof case. So that's quite um, a unique and original thing to see and learn about and experience and also just shows how adaptive people are and how creative. But yeah, that's something that is quite interesting. <laughs> So I came back from Calais after six months there in August of 2020 and then I went into my fourth and final year at university and I wanted a way to continue to stay involved with helping refugees and so I found this charity called Solidarity which is entirely student-led. Um, there are students from over 60 universities in the world that participate and we do two main things for Solidarity. We fundraise and we raise awareness of the refugee crisis. So we fundraise by doing different challenges and different projects and also selling Solidarity t-shirts and all of the money raised from Solidarity goes to legal aid NGOs in Greece and legal aid was chosen as the uh, sort of beneficiary of the fundraising money because legal aid is long term change. Legal Aid help, helps people with their asylum claims, helps them get their refugee status and helps them really build a new home, a new life in their place, uh, safe place, so in Greece, in the case of Solidarity. Um, and raising awareness is also done by a variety of things, but we do conferences, we do webinars, we, we do so many different events in order to uh, try and spread the message of the refugee crisis, let people 
know what's going on in the world and why sort of explains sort of the things that i've already talked about um try and bust bust some myths and um try and correct a lot of misinformation out there uh, that is out there so um being with solidarity for my final year of uni has been really great and i think it really helped me move on from calais because i knew that i was still involved in this social cause i still had something to do that was working towards helping refugees and asylum seekers and worked really great with my final year of uni because i was working with other students and so um it was really like easy to run and be a part of alongside doing my final assessments mm -hmm.